because you've never done them before, you know, you could go, okay, I'll, I'll, give, I'll designate three days to create my new website. And then as you do it, you're like, friggin' hell, there's so much more stuff to do to, ah. And, <laughs> yeah, and you realize, well, that's not a three-day project at and all. And then you find yourself watching this video and then in that video and that video and then all of a sudden you're watching cat videos. And it's like it started with this and all of a sudden it's different. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> Welcome to Marketing with Vino, the edutainment business growth podcast. Mixing education and entertainment to make growing your service business much more fun. Your hosts, Quinton Venter, online marketing expert, and Gabby Kowalski, creator of the Business Freedom Formula, have a glass of wine and share powerful and up-to-date strategies to help grow your service business fast. Hey guys, welcome to another amazing episode, Marketing with Vino. Joining us is the most amazing Gabs. Welcome Gabs, how are you? Ah, oh, freaking awesome. It's so beautiful and sunny. You just spent the whole day driving around the mountains, hanging out with my brother who's down from the UK and it was super fun. We were talking about, he just did a, a course on behavioral profiling and so we're just, we were going deep on all the different types of energies there are, uh, specifically around like the disc profile but in the UK they use colors. Anyway, it was really, really cool. Love, love, love nature and epic conversations. And now I'm back. I've got champagne in my hand That's and it. you have... I've got an RNA. A, a what now? <laughs> it's a different grape variety. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a beautiful white wine and got some ice in it because it is freaking hot um, today in Sydney. But um, looking forward to kick off Marketing with Vino 2017. New year, new you. Um, not a new business, but let's talk about that. Let's talk about marketing and what is 2017 like for business owners, what they should be focusing on and how they can basically make the most out of their 2017 um, you were mentioning that yesterday you ran a, a, a webinar for your VIP clients, your first class members. Um, tell us a little bit about it. T tell us what you took them through and what are some of the key lessons that they got out of it that was be that's beneficial for our amazing listeners. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, so yeah, guys, today's, today is going to set you up so you get more done in 2017 uh -uh, with more inspiration and more fun than you've ever had. Yeah, and you know you really get your marketing projects done. So one of the things that I think holds business owners back is that they don't prioritize working on their business like they, well, small business owners anyway, they don't prioritize working on their business like they prioritize working in their business. What do I mean by that, you might ask? The, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what I've noticed, right? The, um, that ultimately if they if they've got to be in the business working with clients they honor that and they won't plan around that if something urgent pops up they're not going to ditch their client and go handle that whereas often if they haven't planned out what they want to achieve why they want to achieve it and you know committed to getting that stuff done quite often their to-do list drags on and on and on and on and they get literally distracted by urgent other things that you know that they blocked out some time to work on their business, but then something happens and all of a sudden they go, oh, well, I can move that to another day. And the, then the on the business activities tend to get moved or they load themselves up, especially in January. They get all excited. It's a new year. Let's do this. <laughs> they load themselves up with all these inspired, you know, um, ideas. And then at some point, because there's too much there and they're actually not keeping up with it, it starts to kind of eat away, eat away. They get overwhelmed and they'll do one of two things. They'll either procrastinate to avoid dealing with the big mountain of work they've got or they'll go into what I call um, <clears throat> ignoring it or, <laughs> you know, getting, getting distracted. So it's like, it's a, to me, distraction, so it's a form of procrastination, but it's unique in its own right because what we do when we get distracted is we literally start to have other things become more important than us working on our business. Mm. And, you know, so on the lower level of procrastination, it's a, oh, I better clean my fridge out because, you know, that's important and I'll, I'll do that joint venture project later. Yeah, I've been <laughs> meaning to clean my fridge for so long. I've got to get that done first. Yeah, just Today's the, the day. Time. And I should do it because I'm inspired to do it, right? <laughs> but to me where it's really coming from is that you're not in alignment with your action plan. You're not in alignment with, you know, and what I mean by alignment is it's not like, in, like you're not thirsty, you're not hungry 
for getting it done. You're not excited about it. It's 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 literally using you're using willpower to get stuff done in your business versus linking all of those actions to something really cool. So last night I ran an online workshop with my awesome, awesome first class peoples. And what we did is we ran a process and I wanted to share it with everyone here. And Quinton's going to add some of his own gold to it as well because Quinton's yeah. got like beautiful strat- strategies around getting stuff done. So once I finish the process, jot this down, guys. It was just like the steps so, so you can do it after uh, after this. And then Quinton's going to give you like awesome bonus, get shit done stuff. <laughs> so, so this is what I do. The very first thing you want to get is you don't want to look at 2017 and ask yourself, what do I want to achieve at the end of 2017 on its own? If you just look at 2017 and go, okay, December 2017, this is where I want to be at, you're missing a massive opportunity to create even more awesomely. And here's why. Because your business is going to be around a lot longer than a year, hopefully, because we're hoping that you want to be in business long term, right? So I kind of look at business no different to having a kid. Not that I have a kid, but I've got two because I've got two businesses. um, And so to me, business is a long-term commitment. You know, I don't think, okay, like if I was to have a kid, I wouldn't go, what do I want for my kid this year? I'm invested in my kid for the long haul. So why is that relevant? Because if you start to look at planning out 2017 from a perspective of where do I want to be three to five years from now? Three to five years from now, what level of income am I producing? How many staff do I have? What's my free time like? You know, what's my quality of lifestyle like? What's the impact I'm making on the planet? How am I delivering my products slash services in an even more innovative way? How have I grown? What have I experienced? You know, when you come from that place and you place that, that, you know, that goal a little bit further away, it creates the illusion of space. It takes the overwhelmment out of it. It makes it more fun, first up. You know, two, there's a guy called Vision who runs a company called Mind Valley, And you may or may, may or may not have heard of him as you're listening. I know Quinton has. It's a great guy. Um, yeah, great company. <clears throat> and I'm going to quote him here because what he said is most people overestimate what they can achieve in one year and underestimate what they can achieve in three. And what this does is that if we have too much that we want to achieve in one year but we haven't solidified a three to five year vision, it actually puts us into stress, releases cortisol. Um, we, we end up feeling like we're just we're constantly in a must, I have to, it's urgent kind of place. Yeah. And then we're not happy, we're stressed, right? And when you're stressed, you release cortisol. Do you know that cortisol makes you dumber? The, um, it actually reduces your intellect, it reduces your creativity, and it definitely reduces fun. <laughs> yeah. So you become a divvy down there, you're like Yeah. Yeah, so the first thing is go go further. Go three to five years from now. Where do I want to be? Okay, now that I'm clear on that, I know exactly what that looks like, feels like, sounds like, you know, <laughs> however however you want to put it. Then you go, okay, what do I need to, where do I need to be by the end of 2017 to be on track for that? However, where do I need to be at the end of 2017 taking in that I actually honoured every other part of my world? One of the other mistakes business owners make, and I've so been there in the past, is they focus just on business and they say, look, you know what, I'm just going to focus on business this year. Mm. I'm not going to focus on health or love or spirituality, purpose, insert, whatever. I'm just going to focus on business and then after that, I'll live. Now, there's two problems with that. One is if you're in the vibrational frequency of working your ass off and not honoring all the other areas of your life, you're actually not in the vibrational frequency to attract lifestyle. You're in the vibrational frequency that attracts more work, which means your year, if I was to predict it, is going to have even more problems, even more urgencies, even more disasters, even more uphill battles. You're going to make possibly. more flames that you need to put out along the way. Yep. You're going to give yourself 18 action items to do a day. You're going to find yourself really struggling to do it. You're going to be exhausted. You're not going to have the energy, the creativity, the intelligence because your body is now stressed to really perform at a high level. Mm. You know, so so like from from that perspective, massively not the way to go, right? The um, look for a second, I'd really like you to consider that. What if we were to literally just move that timeline back, not because we're letting ourselves play small, not because we're underachieving, not because we're dreaming small, dream huge, 
you know, whatever you, I really believe that whatever the mind can think up, the universe and you can deliver. And I'm saying the universe and you because it's not just about sitting there and waiting for the universe to deliver it, right? The, um, You've got to get shit done along the way. Yeah, you know. And so, so for me, it's tap into that. Like, where are we? Like, what's that, what's that longer version goal? Why is that sexy? Here's what I found. That when you actually create from this place, you get more done, more achieved with less, with less, um, less action, like less input. Because you're in the vibe and the flow of ease. You're in the vibe and flow of fun. You're in the vibe and flow of passion, creativity, and enjoying the process. Mm. You know, you're no longer going, once I get that outcome, then I'll be happy. You're like, you know what? How am I going to set up 2017 so I'm on track for my big goal and I enjoy the process? I stay in a great vibe, you know, and then it shifts it. So this is where the next question to ask yourself is, you know, in 2017, what are your projects and goals in the area, not just in business and money, but in health and body? You know, what would you like to achieve with your body that will set you up to be on track for your bigger vision of fulfillment and happiness? What would you like to, um, what would you like to achieve and grow in the area of love? You know, how do you want to up-level your relationship with your family, with your friends, with your love, lover or lovers, however you rock it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> The, um, and then the fourth quadrant you want to go, to me there's four areas and everything kind of goes into them. So money is one area and business falls into that category. Um, purpose is another area. And with purpose, we have impact, making a difference. We have spiritual growth. We have our own personal experiences like, you know, travel and learning how to play the piano or whatever, right? We've got love, which is all the relationships. And we've got body, which is health, which is how do you want this vehicle that you have to be. When we create 2017 from all four realms, we actually grow ecologically. We grow in the vibrational frequency of the bigger goal that we're creating. We're already being the person that we're stepping into versus waiting for once I have a million dollars, then I'll. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's, it's, so your, whole, one, it's your whole process of be, do, have, right? Yeah, totally. Mm. The um, 110%. So one, what's your three to five year? vision for your life and your business what's your 2017 vision for all those four areas that you know that by december if you're in that if you're in that place if those those boxes are ticked you're well on track to you know to be to be you know manifesting getting and having everything you want three to five years from now then once you've got that once you've got that done and you know where you want to go in 2017 the next thing to do is to go back and it's to actually go back over 2016. And you want to ask yourself three questions, and you want to have three pieces of paper for this, and you want to go, okay, in 2016, what am I proud of? What did I get done? What did I achieve? And you just go nuts. And I call this the reverse gap. I call this the positive gap, where most of us in business are looking at the negative gap, the, all the shit that needs to be done. When you tap into the reverse gap, it actually has you feel so proud and good that that vibration has you do more ongoing versus yeah. get overwhelmed, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. So first, first conversation, pride. What am I proud of? Jot it all down. I'm proud of this, this, this. And in everything you can think of, it's a pride dump. Let yourself feel it. Let yourself actually pat yourself on the back and go, look at me. High five. And, yeah, high five. <laughs> and honestly, the best way to do it is to go, where was I in January 2016? How many staff did I have? What was my revenue? How was I running my business? How many hours was I working? What was my health like? What was my relationships like? How was I delivering my service? What was my client like? Have a look at what you've actually already grown in. Second conversation you want to have with yourself after you've like, you know, you've, you've given yourself a big head is what I call the gap conversation. And this is the, okay, well, what didn't get done in 2016? What did you say you're going to do, but you didn't do? What did you do and it didn't work? You know, what's not working, what's not finished, what, quite frankly, do you know after 2017 is a problem? You could have discovered problems in 2016. So that's the gap. You jot down all the crap that you believe um, didn't get done. And then you have a third conversation with yourself, and it's called the focus conversation. The focus conversation is, okay, what from last year am I keeping, maintaining, and what am I putting into my projects from my gap? So when you look at your pride, okay, well, make let's make sure we maintain some of the stuff that got you proud because 
if you don't, you could lose it, right? Mm. So if you're like, yeah, I rocked it out content marketing in 2016, but that doesn't, then content marketing doesn't end up on your projects <laughs> for 2017. Well, I can tell you right now from experience, I remember I got my physical health to a level of awesomeness. And then I went, well, I've got this health thing done. You know, I'm looking good. I'm, you know, I've got a little bit of a six pack. I'm all tight. And It'll toned. take care energy. of itself for the next 20 years. <laughs> yeah. And then I went, I'm just going to focus on business now. And I didn't put health back in. And that year, that was a big mistake. So speaking from experience, what are you going to maintain? So focus, what are you going to maintain? And what are you going to finish? Please get that, guys. And some of it is what are you going to start? Because you got things in your didn't get done that you didn't even start. So it's a what am I going to start, maintain and finish? What's my focus? Then you take all the stuff from the focus and you put it into 2017. But then what you do is you cross reference that with what you've already got for 2017 based on the, the going forward into the three to five years and working it back and having a look mm. at the body, the purpose. The, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you get, that, you get that list, you get your focus list, you smoosh them together. And then, right? That's your 2017 action plan. That's your 2017, this is where I'm going in ecology. This is where I'm going to look after my marketing. I'm going to look after my growth. I'm going to look after me, my family, my health, my all of it, like my fun. The, um, and then literally with that list, when you've got it all there, the, um, what I do is I prioritize them. So I'm like, okay, what are, the, what are the first projects that need to be done in the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter? But I do this knowing that the, the second, third, and fourth quarter could tweak. The intention here is just to kind of prioritize them in what's first, second, third, fourth, and just to map it out so it kind of brain, like it chunks it, and your brain kind of sees it as more achievable. So you're not looking at like a big thing now, it's like it's in four groups. And your group one is what you take action on in your first quarter. At the end of your first quarter, you look at what's left, you look at what you've added, because you're a friggin' nut bag and you've added more stuff by this point. <laughs> the, um, <laughs> And then you organize quarter two and quarter three and four again, and you tweak it as you go, but you, you make sure that you document this in a place. You put this in your office. You know, you've got this visually somewhere. It's got to be in front of you. You've got to be reminded of it. You've got to check in with yourself on it daily. You, you, it's got to become part of you, become part of your routine. There needs to be consistency in the execution of this. Massively, because if there isn't, it's just a whole bunch of dreams in a notebook that you ended up losing in your cupboard. Absolutely. And then you check and back on it five years ago and you're like, oh, yeah, oh, I should oh, do that right. again. Yeah. yeah, I was meant to create joint <laughs> ventures. Oh, I was going to do content marketing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like you get in a position in your business, you're like, shit, what do I do now? And then you check back and it's like, oh, yeah, if I could only do X, Y, and Z consistently, then everything is looked after. It, yeah, it becomes part of it, and a lot of people will listen to this and don't do anything with it. And there will be a few that take this, and it'll be life changing. It'll be the one Absolutely. thing that is the, the the missing link to where you want to be and where you currently are. Yeah, well, it's funny. Like the feedback I got off, uh, from the webinar, and even today, because some people couldn't join me live, so they were watching the recording <clears throat> today, and I was getting SMSs throughout the day going, "I loved it," That's and awesome. you know, they're they're letting me know. So. After you've mapped out, you know, after you've organized it, what you want to do is you want to have a look at the whole thing and you want to go, okay, what's my theme for 2017? What's my word? You know, and it's got to be something that means something to you, that drives you, that holds all of this together. And it all, like that way you're not going to get distracted by other things that could potentially veer you away from achieving this. So my word for 2017 is global. And that's because everything I'm doing is about making a bigger global impact in every way, shape, or form. That word to me means a million things. You know, today I was getting SMSs from my clients and they were like, oh, I love the webinar. My word's this. And the um, and even last night they were telling me, you know, they were giving me their word. And some of them had, you know, inspired action. Some of them had content rock star. Some of them had, you know, it's whatever it is that's going to like get you feeling something. You know, get you going, oh, I'm excited about this. And I told all my people they've got, to, they've got to write up their word and stick it in their office above their organization board, which I call a scrum board. And then they've got to put all their projects into their scrum board, you know, that, uh, that they've mapped out and, or, and just start actioning it. And finally, guys, this is as simple as it gets. Every Monday, 
what you do is you look at your, you know, your, your, you look at all the projects that you've got going on that are now projects, not, you know, the ones that you've designated for the first quarter. The, um, you make sure that you're working on certain projects every week and you choose a couple of projects that you're going to work on that week. Ecologically, don't choose 18, you know, like give yourself some sleep and some time to actually nurture yourself. Yeah. The, um, so choose a couple of projects that you that you believe are the next ones to work at. Then that day, write out, okay, what are the actions I could take on these projects today? Once again, be ecological with yourself. You know, set yourself up to win with this. I prefer you guys to use this strategy with less and set up the neuro pathways of achievement than to overachieve and, and have it not work and have you go into overwhelm. So for the first couple of weeks, honestly, even if it's doing small things and, you know, like it could be the dumbest thing. Okay, well, for my health, I'm going to drink eight glasses of water. Okay, today I drink eight glasses of water and I send that email. Like it could be something really like you know you can achieve it. Absolutely. And then, we, yeah, we, look well, at it, well, we look at it in a way from what is a foolproof action that you can take that's going to get you closer to success today. So for me, for example, this year I'm focusing very heavily on my health. And a foolproof action that I can take daily is to have my sneakers ready for me by the time that I get out of bed. So I can literally just go and put my sneakers on. My sneakers are on, I'm dressed. I'm good to go. That's the very first step. I was going to say, you, I was going to ask you, like, is, this a, <laughs> uh, is this a pajama jog? Or? <laughs> so like, I just imagine Quinton, it's hot, getting up in his little box of shorts, going, sneakers, all right, running down the street, going, Let's oh, do shit. This. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Yeah. It's, it's just taking a simple foolproof step that's going to ensure you to be successful in the very first thing. Um, it's, it's my get shit done list. It is the, the one thing that I need to focus on today that's going to be the first domino that's going to be flicked over and the rest of the things just take care of itself. Um, but it, it's in a way that I can't stuff this up. It is just I get this done and anyone can get this done. And it just it's the law of consistency that come into play afterwards. Yeah, um, massive. So yeah. once you create the habit, you know, systems and structures actually create freedom. They truly do that if you don't have a system in place that supports you, um, you're not free. You're all over the shop and you're stuck in urgency. You're stuck in cortisol. You're stuck in stress. Mm. Unless you're organized to a certain degree, you're constantly chasing your tail. The, um, and that's not fun. Like it's, it's, you know, yes, of course, if you like a challenge. I like a challenge. I like a tiny bit of stress in my life. I get bored if everything's too cruisy all the time. Because I like the contrast of it, but do I want to live there 24-7? Hell no. Mm. You know, it's funny. The um, studies show that, you know, if you constantly are happy 24-7, you actually stop being happy because you don't have the contrast, meaning that, you know, a lot of people will think, oh, I just want to set up a business where I can just be on the beach 24-7 and uh, travel the world. And for, for a lot of people, they find that for the first couple of months, that's great, but then they get bored, they start to, like their soul starts to die. So what I'm saying to you, it's not about not challenging yourself, it's not about not stretching yourself, it's actually about beautifully dancing between stretching your comfort zones, you know, and nurturing yourself at the same time and not being so hard on yourself, giving yourself the space of, I'm in business for a long time. At the yeah. end of the day, you know, some of the projects that you set out for yourself, because, they, because you've never done them before, you know, you could go, okay, I'll, I'll, give, I'll designate three days to create my new website. And then as you do it, you're like, friggin' hell, there's so much more stuff to do. To, ah! and, <laughs> the, uh, and you realize, well, that's not a three-day project at and all. And then you find yourself watching this video and then in that video and that video. And then all of a sudden you're watching cat videos. And it's like it started with this and all of a sudden it's different. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. But this is where... If you could make 2017 the year that you consciously choose what you're going to do, you give yourself a break, but you also push yourself. It's this beautiful, like awesome support. Be your own best boss. Be your own best leader. Be your own best friend around this. And every week, tap into it. What projects am I working on? Every day, okay, what actions can I take today? Jot them down. Tick them off. You know, and you know what, guys? If you didn't get an action done today... Like, it's not the end of the world, just move it to tomorrow. Oh, shock horror, right? The world's yeah. not ending. No, but I see people, like, freak out about this stuff. Absolutely. And it's like, dude, calm down. It's okay. Like, if you lost your leg, did someone, 
you know, chew your arm off, like, did you lose your house? Like, really, in the grand scheme of things, please stop being so hard on yourself and just get it done. If we commit to getting it done versus getting it done right, the whole game changes. What's your take on that? 100% agree. I couldn't say that last statement any more better than you did. If you at least get something out there, you can improve on it. And it's the matter of just getting that very first thing out. It reminds me of a book title. Um, it's Ready, Fire, Aim. And it talks about the growth journeys from zero to one million, from one million to 10 million, and 10 million to 100 million. And it talks about the different main focuses that a business is in during those stages. Now, this is, this is majority talking about um, brick and mortar business, but it takes the same concept that the, from zero to a million, it's all about marketing and sales. And that should be your number one focus. It's about marketing and sales. Don't worry about all the other stuff, marketing and sales. That's going to grow you from zero to one million. Um, but the main, folk, the, the main concept of the book is it's ready, fire, aim. So ready, get shit out there, and then retweak it and refine it and move forward. Um, this entire episode, as you're talking about 2017 and where you want to be and all of that, it reminds me of a gym session that I had with my new PT um, last week. And what we did was we, since December, we started back on the foundations of um, body movement. So he's all about mobility and functional functional movements and breathing. So it's all back to basics. So I've gone from bench press bench pressing 120 kilos to not doing any bench press at all because I can't even breathe properly through my diaphragm. So we're learning all of these new things, and we just last week started doing a bit more um, resistance training. So I had some kettlebells and was doing some squats and movements and so forth. But he's not the kind of trainer that would put me through, come on, two more, two more, two more, push, push, push. He's the one that would stop me in mid-exercise and say, you're doing it wrong, focus on this. Let's just get this right. Um, Because ultimately, when I do put a heavy weight on, I want to be able to perform it in a way that it's going to be suitable for me and I'm not going to injure myself long term. But as we were going through these exercises, and it's not... It's not that he's pushing me beyond what I've done before, but it is, it is putting up a bit of a fight inside of me. And I, during the training, I was like, what is this? And as I'm looking at it, I was like, how am I showing up to this? Am I, am I giving up before I actually know that I can push all the way through? Or am I seeing it through the whole way? Because I know there's more in me. Or am I taking the easy way out? And in that miss or in that moment of doing the squat and doing the movement and he's telling you you've got three more left. It, it's only 10 reps, but you've only got three more left. And I'm there doing the exercise and I'm thinking to myself, should I give up? Should I keep going? And how am I actually showing up? If, that is, if this is one part of my life, how am I showing up in other areas of my life? And that's when it clicked to me. As I'm doing this exercise in this um, PT session, I'm learning that this here is just how I'm showing up how I'm showing up each and every day, doing my exercise, doing my breathing exercise, as, as small and minute as it may seem in a grand scheme of things, but being consistent with this and seeing it through and, and, and pushing through with it so that I can have the bigger picture at the end of the day, that to me was the biggest lesson as to how am I actually showing up to this. Lo- love that because, oh, look, honestly, the... The achievement of things comes from a whole bunch of small little things that had to happen and be mastered. You know, and I like this because that's what you're talking about. It's like all these little things, you know, if I'm hearing you correctly. Yeah. And, you know, and so sometimes in business, you know, if you're in a place where you're like, yeah, just two more, well, those two more could be getting done in the wrong way. And to me, it's not just the focus of sales and mastery that gets you to a level where you can start to really systemize. It's actually the mastery of sales and mastery and, sorry, sales and marketing. The, um, and, you know, marketing to me is a big pull because in marketing, it's not just getting leads. It's not just, um, it's not just having brand awareness. It's actually about retaining clients. Marketing is also in delivery. The way you deliver, the way you get results, the experience that you create for your clients is all marketing because that is what has them rave about you. And the best form of right, uh, marketing is to create raving fans, right? Absolutely. So to me, when a business focuses on mastering sales and marketing, and it's not about putting one more ad campaign out there, one more, you know, one more promotional campaign, it's actually about slowing down sometimes in the process of that to make sure that your focus is on mastering sales and mastery. Ma- my goodness, <laughs> mastering 
That's sales exactly. and marketing. Would you agree with that though? Absolutely. 100%. And then once your business is at that level, and for some of you, you know, the million dollars may not be the model. Like this model is more for, you know, like it depends on where you want to go. Like you, some small business owners never want to hit a million. The, the business model that you've got is more of a, you know, a half a million or a 250. Um, yeah. And that's completely fine, right? But it's about when whatever whatever your money goal is, if your money goal is a quarter of a million, sales and marketing all the way. Once you get to that level of, financial ease then you systemize then you then you work on other projects to keep growing you know your business beyond that um so from from that perspective you know as you're listening to this guys please put marketing projects into your 2017 that you know that by the end of 2017 will have you on track you know to live that version of business that you set out to create quinton i freaking love you happy new year Mwah. It's been a pleasure and honor chatting with you. As always, I'm about to get on the phone with a client, have a chat, create, ironically, their whole marketing <laughs> camp, um, their whole marketing plan for 2017, and then I'm off to the beach to drink champagne and have epic conversations with my sister-in-law. Thank, Thank you so you. much for sharing your wisdom. You are beautiful. Um, and you too. Enjoy the session with your with your client and with your sister, and have fun. And looking forward to kicking this off next week with another amazing episode. Love you lots. Enjoy the heat. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. You've been listening to Marketing with Vino. If you enjoyed this episode and want to access the resources discussed in this episode, go to marketingwithvino.com and select which episode you've listened to. 